Seth Ferranti here, your guide through the dark corners of the criminal underworld. As an outlaw filmmaker, author, and journalist, I've delved deep into the minds of gangsters, drug lords, and prison gangs. But my journey doesn't stop there. Let me take you on a thrilling ride as we explore the hidden stories and untold truths that lurk behind the prison walls. Even prominent drug kingpin Rafael Edmonds attempted to gain Silk's favor, offering him a share of his illicit profits. However, Silk declined, determined to carve his own path. His game plan was well constructed and he was ruthless in executing it. People hesitated to flaunt their wealth as they didn't want Silk to think they were prospering. Weak individuals were not allowed to possess anything valuable as Silk's philosophy was clear. Only men with integrity and heart deserved respect. Silk played mind games adeptly and used fear to maintain control. He was known for his unpredictability, always keeping people off balance. His reputation alone was often enough to deter investigations and court cases against him. The mere possibility of what Wayne could do was enough to intimidate. He manipulated situations to extract money from his targets, even lawyers and Italians in Georgetown. His reputation was bolstered by sporadic bursts of violence that seemed to strike without warning. Silk's actions often seemed driven by his desire to maintain dominance and his reputation as the most feared man in D.C. remained unchallenged. Another hustler from Harlem named Alpo was establishing a cocaine pipeline from New York to D.C. Alpo had the connections, but soon discovered that D.C. locals didn't respect out-of-town hustlers, and he often fell victim to local gangsters. Alpo aimed to fill the void left by Rafael Edmonds' conviction and sought someone local with respect and influence to watch his back. This led to a fateful meeting between Silk and Alpo, orchestrated by a young man named Lil Pop. Initially, Silk had heard a false rumor that Alpo was plotting against him, but Lil Pop clarified the situation and they met. Silk got bailed out of jail by Lil Pop, thanks to Alpo's financial assistance. This led to a partnership where Silk provided security and intimidation, allowing Alpo to expand his cocaine operation rapidly. With Silk by his side, Alpo could navigate DC safely, but it was a double-edged sword. DC locals were wary of Alpo due to his association with Silk, but at the same time, Silk's presence deterred anyone from attempting to harm Alpo. Their partnership was lucrative and deadly, but it also bred jealousy and tension among DC hustlers who wanted to rob Alpo but were paralyzed by fear of Silk. Alpo's reputation and business grew exponentially with Silk acting as his enforcer. However, the two powerful figures in the DC drug game were on a collision course, and only one would emerge victorious. Alpo's ruthless business sense and Silk's fearsome reputation created a formidable team. But the streets of Washington, DC were about to witness a deadly confrontation between two titans. In the unforgiving streets, there's a code. If you commit a crime, be prepared to face the consequences without snitching. If you can't do the time, then don't do the crime. Wayne Perry embodied this code. He kept people silent through threats, intimidation, and deadly force. However, Silk's unwavering loyalty to his so-called friend Alpo would lead to his undoing. Alpo, despite his reputation as a street-savvy hustler, proved to be a snake when the heat came down. He got arrested on various drug and murder charges, and the government was determined to make him pay. Facing the possibility of the death penalty or life in prison, Alpo cracked under the pressure. His lawyer advised him to cooperate with the government and provide information on Wayne Perry. Alpo, once seen as the less evil of the two, made a deal with the feds. He decided to betray Silk to save himself, becoming a snitch and entering the Witness Protection Program. The betrayal sent shockwaves through the drug game and the streets of Washington, D.C. Silk's unwavering loyalty to Alpo proved costly. If he had known Alpo would snitch, he might have taken matters into his own hands. Alpo's betrayal left a lasting stain on the drug trade in the city, and it was clear that if Silk had known the truth, things might have ended differently for Alpo and other snitches. The government employed a multi-pronged strategy to bring Wayne Perry to justice. 
First, they arrested him on murder charges, effectively putting him on ice. In December 1992, headlines declared Perry's arrest as a suspected hitman responsible for numerous drug gang executions, including the murder of Garrett Gary Terrell. Perry was charged with Terrell's death, who had allegedly planned to rob Alpo of a 100 kilogram cocaine shipment. While he was in custody, the government, armed with Alpo's cooperation, prepared a superseding federal indictment. In March 1993, the indictment was unsealed, charging Perry, Tyrone Price, and Michael Jackson with nine homicides attributed to their violent drug gang from 1989 to 1991. The charges included murder in the furtherance of a continual criminal enterprise, conspiracy to distribute crack cocaine, racketeering conspiracy, first degree murder, retaliating against a witness, kidnapping, and robbery. The prosecution aimed to use this case to establish a precedent in targeting specialized subsets of drug gangs focusing on hitmen. Perry was accused of being involved in eight of the nine alleged homicides, including the killing of three women cooperating with authorities investigating the Martinez organization. One of these victims was Evelyn Carter, shot after a Keith Sweat concert, allegedly for talking too much about a murder. Perry later learned that Carter had been spreading a lie, which led to her tragic end.